we, we've been talking about uh, okay. mysteries, uh, the, the big mysteries in physics, the big mysteries in science. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm sort of curious about uh, if each of you could pick like the, the, the biggest mystery, the thing that you're most curious about, that you'd most like to get an answer to, what would it be? Uh, Marcelo? <clears throat> Uh, to me, the biggest mystery is the origin of time, you know, how things got started, you know. And I honestly, I don't even know if we can provide a fully scientific answer to that question simply because of the way science works. You know, science operates within a conceptual framework, and any answer that we give uses that framework. So the question then becomes, where did this framework for science come from, you know, and how is science even going to deal with that, right? So we're really kind of stuck with that sort of paradox. So that, to me, is the hardest question we can ask. Katie, what about you? There's a lot of good ones. But the one that has occupied me is, what is the universe made of? So if you take everything in, in this room, your body, the air, the walls, now let's throw in the planets, throw in the stars, everything that we know about in, in our experience is made of atoms. But all of that adds up to only 5% of the content of the universe. Well, I want to know about the dark matter and the dark energy that make up the rest, the other 90, the bulk of our universe. And you think, I mean, I, I've been reading your book, you think that we might have an answer relatively soon to dark <laughs> matter, at least. Yeah, so 25% of this cosmic cocktail is, is dark matter, and that's what makes up, for example, most of our galaxy. So the, uh, the, the Milky Way has this, f this flattened central region. It's like a pinwheel. And if you go out along one of them, you get to the sun. That's where all the stars are. But then there's this giant spherical object that we call a halo made of dark matter. We think it's some new kind of fundamental particle. We think it might have the weak interactions that I was talking about before, which means you can go build detectors underground, wait for them to be hit, by these uh, dark matter particles. And people are doing that, and there are, well, there's, there's a number of experiments that are seeing something, and they're in disagreement with one another. And we, we, so we have to wait and see. But I think the community at large, this is, this is a problem that's well-defined, soluble, and there's a good chance we'll have this one in the next decade. Max, what's, what's your biggest mystery? I, first of all, agree with you that there are a lot of good ones here to pick from. Yeah. And you both picked good ones that I'm very excited about. So let me pick a, a third one. Uh, I, I'm fascinated by that, which is the physics of consciousness. I, this is something which philosophers have pondered for thousands of years. It seemed for thousands of years like a pretty hopeless problem that you can speculate about over some alcoholic beverage and then go home because there's nothing you can do about it. And the reason people <laughs> kept thinking it was hopeless was because you have privileged access to your own conscious experience. You know you are aware of these things subjectively and that you're experiencing these colors and sounds, right? But for most of human history, nobody else could know what you, what you were thinking about. But that's changing now. We have this revolution in newer, newer imaging technology where you can put yourself in an fMRI machine or a magnetoencephalography machine, or you can put, you have a lot of experiments with epileptic patients with a lot of electrodes in their head while they're fully alert and talking and doing stuff. And by just looking at that data, and plugging it into a computer, you can figure out in real time a lot of things about what they're actually thinking and experiencing. You can show them pictures, and then the computer can say, ah, that was Halle Berry uh, you're thinking about. And they go, yes, how did you know that? <laughs> and, and what's so cool about that is it takes this old metaphysical thing, which seemed kind of hopeless, much like cosmology thought you know, hope, I, I just, hopeless. I have to tell you, my son has a crush on Halle Berry. <laughs> 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 how do you find out? <laughs> So, uh, so what's, what, what I think is so exciting about this is I said you were excited about dark matter because there's a potential to actually do something concrete about it. And I'm excited about this for the same reason. Because if you put yourself in a scanner, which is, met, which is observing from the outside all the information processing that the computer in your head is doing, right? And then you can, at the same time, observe subjectively from the inside what of this information processing you're conscious of. You can compare the two. But the and problem you can start is to see that, that doesn't explain causation. Well, that, I was going to get that. I mean, yes, you, could, maybe you could match uh, you know, with the brain imaging and, and the thoughts, but it doesn't, it doesn't explain why those thoughts Well, let me get mind. to that. Because in physics, first of all, we're not mainly focused 
if he, on the why question, right, we're, we're very interested in how. And uh, if, if you, <coughs> you could have said the same, <coughs> if you want to know what is a fire, you know, it's just some arrangement of atoms. Well, well, you try this arrangement, that's not fire, or this one is. And then you look for patterns and you say, oh, whenever these equations are obeyed, that's what we call a fire. You see a pattern, right? And we can start to do something similar here. You know, David Chalmers, the the, who is moving to New York now, right, articulated your question famously as the hard problem of consciousness. He said, why is it that you put a quark blob together and there's a subjective experience in it sometimes, but not other times? From a physics perspective, from our perspective, you can transform that instead in, in, by saying you start not with a hard question, but with a hard fact that some quark blobs are conscious, like this one. Hope you don't feel offended <laughs> by being called a blob. Okay? And, and some are not, like the food you ate. And, and uh, then you can say, okay, what is it that's different about those patterns? And what I was getting at with all the newer imaging is you can start to look, okay, of all the information you can measure from outside is flying around in your head, which of, those information process, which of that information is the part that you're conscious of? And which of that is are you not conscious of, like what's controlling your heartbeat and all a gazillion other things? And then you can start looking, what is it that's so special about the conscious part? What equations does it obey? Is there some simple some simple ideas, is there some pattern here, is there some principle? And I, my gut tells me there is some principle there to be discovered, that there's a certain kind of, of complexity of information processing which is the kind of, there's, I, my guess is that they're basically information is the way, is con, the conscious subjective experience is the way information feels when it's being processed in certain complex ways. And I think we now are on the verge of being able to scientifically ask what are those complex ways? So that's a, that's a question I'm very excited about.